Hello everybody, today I'm going to do an interrail based video on things I wish I knew before I went. I thought it would be good to do a travelling based video because this is the time that you guys should be booking your trip. Rebecca and I booked late March and I think that was cutting it way too fine. All the hostels were sort of booked up and we couldn't find any good Airbnbs that were sort of cheap to book and all of our flights were quite expensive because we left it so last minute. So my first point would probably be get booking now, get planning your route, sort of get sorted this side of the year before you let it get too late. Get all of your connecting trains booked and any flights that you need to buy, get it all done now. I mean, obviously I proved that you can do it late in March, but the stress that we caused ourselves wasn't worth it. So definitely do it this time of year. I'd say my second point along the lines of booking, definitely vary between hostels and Airbnbs. So we traveled to seven different places. Um, and out of the seven, we stayed in three Airbnbs and the rest were hostels. I would say that this was a really nice sort of hostel to Airbnb ratio because we'd spend a couple nights in hostels and then when we got to our Airbnbs, it was like a little bit of luxury. You know, you'd have your own shower, um, a kitchen, an oven. Obviously you get that in your hostels, but it was just a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner, a little bit more privacy. So I'd say definitely chuck an Airbnb in there somewhere. Hostels are really good for meeting people. We met a load of lovely, lovely people um, who we ended up going out with in the evening. So that is a perk for hostels. But Airbnb is really, really nice because you can save a lot of money by, you know, buying some pasta, cooking it in one night. That meal is only like three euros max. So instead of going and spending, <coughs> sauce, had the flu. So instead of going and spending like 20 euros on some food out, you can save 17 euros by buying pasta and just cooking it in yourself. So, you know, Airbnbs definitely have connotations of being more expensive, but in the long run, I'd say you sort of save a little bit because of the facilities that you do have when you're staying in an Airbnb. But yeah, I'd, pro I'd say best memories come from hostels because you meet people and, I don't know, they're fun. In Budapest, we stayed in a room which was like, I think it was 14 mixed, so it was female and male. Um, a guy actually left his number in my shoe. Um, I can't remember what his name was. Chris, Chris with a K. And if Chris with a K is watching this right now, I'm sorry I didn't call. My third point would probably be book everything before you go. If you're like me and you stress and worry about things, I would advise you to book everything before you go because you don't want that stress in your life. Like, no thanks. I've spoken to a few people actually who booked their hostels as they went, so they'd be in one country and they'd book their hostels for the next country. Um, I mean, you can do this, like, it obviously is possible, other people have done it, but we booked everything before we went and I just felt a massive, like, relief that we had things planned, we knew where we were going and we had, like, a place to sleep because obviously it's a very slim chance you would never have somewhere to stay, but I don't know, I like being organised, I'm, I'm quite an organised person, so to have, like, all the Airbnbs, all the hostels, like, booked, ready for us to go, just makes me feel a little bit less stressed. This is sort of turning into a accommodation advice video, but it's, I promise I'm getting onto different things, but my fourth point would probably be try and book an overnight train, because it's sort of like one less night of accommodation you have to book, and they're not that expensive. And cabins aren't bad, so we did Prague to Budapest overnight, and I slept all night, like I didn't wake up once. The next morning we met some really nice gals, who was slept underneath us um, and we just sort of hung out in the morning for like an hour while the train was getting into Budapest. Expense hacks. I would also say pack a lot of portable chargers because you can't have enough. The stress of your phone dying, having reservations or passes on your phone that you can't use, that's stressful. I had a tiny a portable charger, it ran out in like an hour, gave me like 30% battery, no thanks. Wasn't too good, so I'd say invest in a ex 
expensive one. My next point is try and book all events and activities through your hostel. Um, you can get quite a good discount if you book them with your hostel. Um, for example, in Budapest, we stayed in the Hive Hostel and we booked our Gellert Bath tickets through them because it ended up being cheaper if we booked it at the hostel instead of going to the spa and booking it with them. Um, they obviously had some sort of like connection which got discounts so yeah look into it and ask kind of what events and activities that they have um, like access to giving you tickets to. I think that's quite a good idea. But on the other hand, it could be that you're getting sort of a bit mugged off. So definitely double check um, whether you are getting a discount. My eighth point is that you should always opt to pay in the local currency. This actually happened to me last week when I was in Hungary. We went to dinner and I paid on my Revolut card, which is basically an international credit card that you can buy. Um, I wouldn't actually call it a credit card. I'd say it's debit because you have to top it up. And the waitress put it in the card machine, the amount I had to pay, and I just sort of paid it without even looking, which is a big, big mistake, always check. When it came through on my bank statement, it said that I'd paid in British pound, which is not what I wanted to do because the card that you're paying in has an in-bank currency exchange rate, um, which is actually better than the local one. Obviously, I know now that the restaurant takes 3% more so yeah always opt to pay in the local currency because businesses prey on people like us young traveling english just to rip them off because they can and i'm really upset that i fell for it i should have actually looked at the receipt and noticed that i paid in pound and not florin so my final point is to not expect that all of the transport will be running at the time that you're traveling um five out of the seven countries had um, transport down when we were there and it sort of messed us up majorly. For example in Berlin we had a five hour walking tour booked and when we woke up the tube was not running um, and we didn't really know how to get there on tram so unfortunately we ended up paying for a taxi which was super expensive um, but yeah just make sure you take um, a map or look at alternatives because you know expect the unexpected. If you'd like to watch my other videos linked to interrailing, I will put them here and here. Please do click on them, they are honestly my most fun videos to make and I am super jealous of all of you that are booking your trip. Have the best time. So if you have any more questions after this video, please do leave a comment or message me directly, I don't mind. And make sure you're subscribed so that if I upload any other videos that are potentially helpful for you, you'll know about it.